just for me. I'm on the footplate of a 67-ton specialised freight locomotive. Driving through Europe's largest private rail station. But I'm not here to talk about trains or railway stations. I'm here to talk about something much, much bigger. And incredibly, this entire train is about to drive into it. The biggest car factory in the world. Based in Wolfsburg, Germany, it's over three times the size of Monaco and manufactures cars at a phenomenal rate. This factory is so big, it can produce 800,000 cars a year. That's 3,600 every day, or a new car every 16 seconds. That means since I started telling you this bit, another new car has rolled off its production lines. So how is that even possible? This gigantic Volkswagen car factory is a titan of modern engineering. Since 1938, more than 46 million cars, from the original Beetle to the brand new Golf, have rolled off this factory's production lines. It's so big, it has its own hotels, football team, and orchestra. But this isn't just the story of a single factory. This is the story of an industry that has revolutionized mass production, changing the way things are made forever. It's Monday morning, and I'm clocking in at the main entrance to the factory. Morgan. Here, your daily commute doesn't end when you enter the factory. This site is so big that getting workers from the factory gates to where they need to be is a challenge in itself. My journey goes on. Morgan. Hello, Morgan. Morgan. Here we are at work, waiting for a bus to get to work. I'm on my way to meet the head of the body shop, but I have to find him first. Does the bus go to the body shop? I think so, yes, it should be. Morgan, um, das body shop, bitte? Board. Apparently, one of the buildings here is a mile and a half long. Imagine building that, putting down the first brick. Right, I've started, but a mile and a half to go. That's body shop? The body shop is on the other side. Other side? Yeah. The Volkswagen factory is massive. It covers a floor area of six and a half million square meters, connected by 60 kilometers of private rail network and 70 kilometers of road. Oh, I think this could be me. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Right, I'm here. Uh, I think. Well, it's it's a door. Right. I'm looking for the body shop. I don't even know if this is the body shop. It's got car bodies in it. Hello. You're on a visit. Yes. This is a factory visit. Nice, nice bus. Right. It's full of tourists in a factory. That's how big this place is. People come to see it on holiday. <laughs> it's a car factory. It's enormous. Hello. Excuse me, do you know the way to the body shop? Uh, kilometer All right, thank you very much. The body shop is that way, two kilometers that way. This place is nuts. Right. Apparently, there are 6,000 bicycles like this one in the factory, just to move people around on. 6,000. Morning. Still in the same factory. Presumably, if you got lost here, you'd never be found. There could be whole communities living in here who are unknown to the rest of humankind. I'm looking for Stefan Braun, the boss of the body shop, where all the parts to make the shell of a car are assembled and attached to the chassis. Are you Stefan? Yes, I am. Richard, good to see you. Come upstairs. Up here. I'm glad I found you. Yeah, be yeah. careful, be careful. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. It gets better when you're high up. Yeah. Look at it. Wow. 
This is your domain. Yeah, the land of the robots. So this is early stages making the car. Yes. There is not a human being in there. No, that's just robots. They're working together like a ballet. How many robots on the whole site? The whole facility in total, 4,200 robots and body shop. But you spend most of your life hanging out with robots, then? Yeah, that's my life. So are you lord of the robots? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it since 17, 18 years now, so I'm used to have my friends down there in yellow and orange. <laughs> and what we're looking at down there is a sort of ruthless pursuit of efficiency, and that all comes out of the scale of this place, doesn't it? Yes. You get more out of a robot than out of a human. They don't make mistakes. Exactly. exactly. Oh, there's a man in there. He's, he's falling in, he's going to get eaten by them. He is right now doing maintenance. Uh, so occasionally there is human intervention. Yes. The first robots were introduced into the factory in 1983. Today, it simply couldn't turn out a car every 16 seconds without thousands of them. My grandfather worked in the car industry at Mulliners in Birmingham, where they built cars by hand out of metal, wood and leather. I don't know what he'd make of this. I think he'd be absolutely fascinated and love it. Or he'd say, Christ, you've done me out of a job. It's amazing. This vast space might be full of robots, but somehow the lack of humans makes this enormous factory feel a bit empty. Although 63,000 people work on this site, so far I've only seen about 10, and it doesn't seem like there's anyone here where the cars are painted. Oh, wow. This is still land of the robots. Look at them. This is no standard paint shop. It's the biggest car paint shop in Europe spread out over eight floors and covering an area the size of Grand Central Station. And still, every car is completed specifically to an individual customer's requirements. There are more than 18 kilometres of conveyor inside the paint shop, and 360 cars come through here every hour. And like other bits of the factory, all the work here is being done by robots. But look, even they have to wear overalls in here as well. That's the most amazing thing is, not every car that comes through is the same colour. So you might have a blue car followed by a white one, not a problem. They can change colour instantly. And they do that by having nozzles and hoses for each colour that rotate at the head of the robot, like the revolver on a revolver. Ensuring that the paint is applied efficiently and evenly requires some very clever science. It's all to do with static electricity, giving a positive and negative charge to the car bodies and the paint so they are attracted to one another. As I shall now demonstrate using this Van de Graaff generator, this box of polystyrene balls, and my hand. Imagine my hand is the car body, the balls are the paint. Put the body in the paint and not a lot happens really. We're in balance. What I need to do now is give myself a positive charge. I put my hand on there before I switch it on. I'm told that's very important. I'm standing on a mat to insulate myself, so I'm going to turn it on. I can feel the hairs on my hand standing up, probably on my head as well, as I'm taking on <laughs> a positive charge. Now, by contrast, the polystyrene balls have a slight negative charge, so that means they should be attracted to my hand. So, plunge car body into paint. Whoa! <laughs> you can see immediately they're going berserk. They're sticking to me like mad. And actually, the reason they're pinging off is that they're actually repelling each other. And eventually, it's smoothing down until it's just one layer thick. That's how they use electricity, to get an even layer of paint. Here in the paint shop, the same principle is used on a supersized scale. First, the cars are dipped in a bath with a high voltage running through it to give them a positive charge. Then they apply an opposite voltage across the painting nozzles to give the paint a negative charge. This means every paint particle is attracted to the metal of the car. The problem now is I'm, I'm filled with electricity and I've got to get rid of it. So let's get rid of these polystyrene balls first, best I can. 
I can't just let go of the machine because I'll get a zap. Right, apparently, if I touch that wooden stick, that earths me. I think I can now turn the machine off without getting zapped. <laughs> I so can't. 